so I have a couple updates for you on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's um, race, her election, her current situation. So how's this for an awesome story? Shockingly, she says, and I'm told this is not a joke, we have also won a primary in the neighboring 15th congressional district via write-in campaign on the reform line. While I am honored that so many Bronxites, is that a word? <laughs> Whatever, it makes sense. Uh, are excited about our campaign. I will remain the Dem nominee for New York 14. And then you can see there she's responding to Ken Lovett, who said, Exclusive, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, with another surprise election win in a district she wasn't even running in. So what happened was the Reform Party said, All right, you know what? We're, we don't have a candidate, so just write in whoever you want, and then whoever wins will be our nominee. And it, now this is... This isn't that big of a deal because there are only like 22 or something like that write-ins and she happened to get the majority of them. Um, so it, to be clear, it's not like thousands of people came out and they were like, oh, Alexandria, we need you. It's, you know, 22 people went out. They live in the Bronx. They're like, oh, I like the one that just won in the other place. Okay, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. But it's still cool. It's cool because it shows you that you can actually generate excitement. If you have politicians who are willing to fight for the people and who are correct on the issues, Alexandria, in no uncertain terms, is running on Medicare for all, free college, a living wage, uh, legalizing marijuana, abolishing ICE, ending the drug war. And by the way, let's be clear about abolishing ICE. That does not mean abolishing borders. She's not in favor of abolishing borders. So there's a lot of misinformation now out there about Alexandria and what she believes because Alexandria got the backing of Democratic Socialists of America. Listen, if you get the backing of Democratic Socialists of America, that doesn't mean that you agree with every single policy position in Democratic Socialists of America. And she certainly does not believe in open borders and some of the other stuff. ICE was created in 2003 by the Bush administration. Customs and Border Protection, they protect the border. If you get rid of ICE, it's not that you get rid of all borders and all border protection. Uh, and in fact, ICE, and we've covered this story before on the show, there's accusations that they're currently engaged in slavery. And the case has merit. A judge ruled, yep, that appears to be slavery. This case can proceed. So there's forced labor going on with ICE. So it's not... It's an extremist organization. It started in 2003 under the Bush administration. It's, it's rife with abuses. It doesn't mean getting rid of all borders, so everybody just needs to understand that, but this is a random side point that I'm making. If you fight on the issues that matter to people, you're going to win, and you're going to generate excitement, and that's exactly what she did. So she happened to win in the neighboring district, which is kind of awesome, but she actually had to um, speak up and say, no, I, I'm rejecting this because you're not allowed, I think, to be a candidate in two districts at the same time or whatever, so it would have created some sort of legal issue. But this leads to our next story, which is not a fun story. Alexandria says, and this is just today, Representative Joe Crowley stated on live TV that he would absolutely support my candidacy. Instead, he stood me up for all three scheduled concession calls. Now he's mounting a third-party challenge against me and the Democratic Party and against the will of the Working Families Party. So what happened here is the Working Families Party, and I didn't know this, but now I do, and I am super pissed. The Working Families Party, which is to the left of the Democratic Party, and it's very active in New York, and they've reliably been, you know, more on the correct side of issues, at least to this point, as far as I could tell. What happened is they endorsed Crowley over Ocasio-Cortez. Shame on you, Working Families Party. Shame on you. But anyway, I digress from that. Bottom line is, Working Families Party endorsed Crowley. Obviously, Crowley lost. But he stays on the ballot uh, for the general election. So the Working Families Party reached out to Crowley and was like, okay, dude, you lost, so uh, we're going to recommend that you take your name off the ballot. Crowley says no. What do you mean no? Apparently, he has to agree to get that name off the ballot. They just can't take his name off the ballot. Crowley says no. Stands up Ocasio-Cortez three times, like she says, for concession calls. What does that mean? That means he's going to keep his name on the ballot, and if he happens to win, go, oh, 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 well, shucks. I didn't know that this situation was going to unfold. I guess that, I mean, I guess I got to go back now. 
I guess I gotta go back to, to Congress. What are you gonna do? So it's his last trick up his sleeve, a slimy, sleazy motherfucker. What happened to Born to Run? Remember that? The day that he lost, he, I'm, oh, I'm gonna dedicate this to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He sings Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run. What happened to that? I'll tell you what happened to that. You're a scumbag. That's what happened to that. You're a narcissist. It, God, these guys are so sickening. Alexandria is running for all the right reasons. Because she cares deeply about the policies and improving people's lives. Corrupt Joe Crowley is a narcissist who thought he was, quote, destined for democratic leadership. So it's all about self-aggrandizement with him. So he's like, I don't care. If I happen to get in there in a sleazy way, I'll do it. And then, by the way, this is what everybody said. Oh, is Bernie Sanders going to spoil it for Hillary Clinton and run third party? Is that what's going to happen? Oh, these guys, they use such dirty tactics on the left, don't they? Well, here you have a corporate Democrat doing it, and I uh, hear motherfucking crickets, bitch. Where's everybody at? Where's everybody at? And what happened to unity? What happened to unity? How many times have you heard the wails and the cries and the screaming and the yelping of, What about unity? Fall in line, you left-wing assholes. <laughs> we hear that all the time. Notice, those calls only go in one direction. Like the band, One Direction. That's, they only go in one direction. It's, only, it's always only the corporatists and the establishment screaming at people on the left. Why don't you fall? In, what about unity? You gotta, I believe in unity. Do you believe in unity? Apparently, you don't believe in unity. Because notice, whenever the person who's further left wins, shh, mum's the word. Unity? What's that? I don't even know what that is. Guys, and this is why I said from the beginning, and some people disagreed with me, but I would just say you're fucking wrong. This isn't... Justice Democrats was never about... Ho ho! Well, we're gonna get in there, gosh golly, and we're gonna work with the establishment Democrats, and we're gonna make this thing okay. Ho ho ho! I'm not naive. The idea is a hostile takeover of the party. You wanna know why? Because the second they have any, uh, the, he sees a little lane to drive through, and he's like, "I'm going to the hoop." This is this is what they do. So. Okay, two could play at that game. You want to play that game? Let's play that game. No, I'm not looking to hold your hand, and I'm not looking to make deals with you when you're wrong on the issues and you're bought. I'm looking to get, get you out of the party. Make the Democratic Party what it should have been all along, a populist left party. So I'm not, I'm not interested. And listen, this is why, you know, she was, Alex was asked recently about Nancy Pelosi. Oh, what do you think about Nancy Pelosi as leader? And she dodged the question. And she was like, well, listen, you know, I'm not there yet, so we shouldn't even be having this conversation, so on and so forth. That's all fine and dandy. And listen, she definitely has a way of getting people who would normally dislike her in the mainstream to actually like her. Like, she's made Joanne Reed like her, which is like, wow, you were pretending she didn't exist when she was up against uh, corrupt Joe Crowley. But, Alex, I would tell you, you have to... You have to be honest in these interviews and be like, no, I don't think Nancy Pelosi should be leader of the Democratic Party. Why? Because you're correct to say that. Because Nancy Pelosi's approval rating is like negative 4,312. She's a paper tiger. No, you know what? She's not a paper tiger. She's a tiger made of money. That's what she is. That's all she has. I got all my corporations behind me and zero people power. She's a dinosaur. She's ancient. She's... Nothing but propped up by the establishment and big money. And the more you call that out, the more popular you become. You're not, like... This idea of, like, you better play nice, Miss New, uh, Miss New Lady on the Block. You better come in. I saw articles like, Ale Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez refuses to take the bait to bash Democrats. Bash away! Bash away! These people aren't popular! You think lead Democratic leaders are popular? They're not popular at all. The more you go after them, which you should do, the more popular you'll become. <laughs> we gotta be clear about what we're standing for. Now, she does that with policies. But she reminds me a little bit of Bernie Sanders in that she'll do, she'll do it with the policies and he'll do it with the policies. But then it's like, ah, eh, we'll walk on eggshells a little bit when it comes to going after Democratic leadership. But actually, she's better than Bernie, and here's why. She's helping all these other Justice Democrats. It's not like she got in and she's like, okay, spotlight's on me and now I'm only going to focus on me. No. She said, uh, Abdul El Saeed, running for governor of uh, Michigan. G 
great candidate, justice Democrat, Medicare for all, free college, living wage, fighting for all the right policies, no corporate PAC money. He's the man. Go vote for him. And she's done it with a bunch of them. And by the way, go to justicedemocrats.com and you need to see all the justice Democratic candidates because the next Ocasio-Cortez is out there. Whether it's Brent Welder, whether it's Kanyela Ng, whether it's Abdul El Saeed. So you go to justicedemocrats.com and check it out and see because... You can get involved. You can uh, canvas for them. You can support them. You can. There's a million ways you can get involved. So Alex is doing a fantastic job on that front. I just wish she would actually go after Democratic leadership because her approval rating would go up. And also, Alex, you don't think the other ones would try to pull a Joe Crowley on you if they could? They can't wait to. See, this is Joe Crowley being corrupt Joe Crowley. This is what he does. Corrupt, corrupt guys are going to corrupt. That's what it is. You think Nancy Pelosi wouldn't find a way to stab you in the back and be a weasel? That's all she wants to do to you. She despises you. She dis you're a threat to her existence in Congress. Of course she despises you. You're the, you're the future. You're the future. You think they're not threatened? Of course they're fucking threatened. So, listen, it, if you support Alexandria, the fight's not over now. Corrupt Joe Crowley's back in. He's back in. Go to Ocasio2018.com and throw her five bucks. Throw her ten bucks. You know? Because she needs... Again, how much did he outraise her by? He had, what, three million dollars or something like that? And she had 300,000? I'm probably fucking up those numbers. I might be confusing it with another race. But she... He outspent her by a tremendous amount of money. And she managed to pull it off. Well, if he's going to mount another run, he's probably going to double his efforts, triple his efforts. So, it's not over. It's not over. So, get involved, throw her five or ten bucks, help her out however you can, because the establishment is not going to go quietly into the night. What they're going to do is break out the daggers and the fangs, and they're going to come after us. So, I say we go after them, and we go after them twice as hard.